Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to part three of my seven part series on working with card kits. In today's video, we will be working with the Looking Up Card Kit by Stampin' Up. It's an all-inclusive kit which is part of our annual catalog and will be available until June 2nd, 2020 and maybe longer. I don't know what's going to be in the next catalog because I have not seen it yet. Now in this series, I am covering every one of our card kits. I thought it'd be just a fun thing to do while a lot of you have more time to spend at home crafting. So in part one of the series, I covered the all-inclusive Notes of Kindness card kit. I created 30 projects with the kit, including projects which would be similar to the ones in the instructions. And then I created many alternate cards and 3D projects. I even showed you how to create a box out of a card, out of a note card. Now in part two, I covered this, this kit here called For the Love of Felt. Again, I showed you how to use the coordinating stamp set and how to use the kit to create cards. And we created alternate projects, including this type of project here where I even used a stamp set from one of the paper pumpkin kits. Again, I created 30 projects. This is a project that you'll see me create in every, this is from the Notes of Cardness, Kindness card kit. This is from For the Love of Felt. You'll see me create little tag treats like this in every one of my tutorials in this series. You will see me creating boxes out of cards in every one of these tutorials in the series. And you'll see me do some other things, which I call my signature crafts. Okay, so that's, that's what I want to be teaching you throughout the series is how to, how to not just make the cards that you are shown in the instructions and in the kit and then suggested, but how to go beyond that. Okay, so we're going to be covering all of the seven kits. Here's another one we'll be covering. Lots of happy. We're going to be covering three of the kits in what's called our 2020 mini catalog, including this Three Cheers for You all-inclusive kit, including Seriously the Best, and including an entire product medley of products called the Botanical Prince Product Medley. Okay, so all together in the series will be seven seven kits and hundreds and hundreds of projects because I don't know when I open the kit how many projects I'm going to be able to create with it. It just all depends. I mean, it just depends on, on how I just work until all the, the materials are gone. That's what I'm, that's how I'm going about this, this very ambitious series. It's not only making me finish kits that I already had for months, it's making me start new kits and it's making me very excited and I hope it'll inspire other crafters to create kits, finish kits that they've been working on, or maybe be inspired to join Paper Pumpkin where you get an all-inclusive kit each month. I mean, just, just, it's a lot of fun and I hope you, I hope you're crafting along with me and getting some ideas from these kits. All right, so here, here's what we have. This is, not all kits are all-inclusive, not all kits in my series. Sometimes stamp sets come separately. In this looking up card kit, it's an all-inclusive card kit. So that means you get a stamping spot, that means you get the ink you need, a stamping block, and this is nice stamping block, a nice thick stamping block. It says Stampin' Up on the side. You get a stamp set. It just popped open. Okay, and we'll put that on a background so you can see it. You get all of the material. So we'll put that there, and you can see. So very thankful. Happy birthday. Thanks so much. Okay. Feel better soon. And... Congratulations. I hear congratulations are in order. Okay, so all of these are great little stamps. Let's look at what else is in this all-inclusive kit. And this is a nice box. Okay, so, and it's not marked, so you can use the box for a gift as well. In fact, if you just want to make up kits to give people so they can bless others with cards, that would be really nice too. Maybe you have friends that are not very crafty. You could, you could get a kit, make up the whole kit for them, finish the cards. Keep any extra supplies you have and just give them all the finished cards without messages on them. Okay, so here's some dimensionals. These are these are foam dimensionals. So these are your adhesives to make things more 3D. Okay, let's look at the envelopes later. Let's look at the card bases and then we'll look at the envelopes to go with the card bases. So we have, and also let me just take out the instructions because actually this is the first time I'm opening this kit. So here, Here's what one card looks like. These are all beautiful as they are. But I'm going to do a lot a lot of other things with these than, than just the suggestions. These are just 
Great, so we have five different designs, as you can see. Five different designs. And so what I do when I take out the instructions is I, I look at the coordinating colors, and then I'm gonna go dig out everything I need. So basic black, Bermuda Bay, Daffodil Delight, Granny Apple Green, Lovely Lipstick, Petal Pink, and Pool Party. I'll be gathering cardstock I need um, and other things to go with these projects. I already can see these being used as wrappers and tag toppers and things for treats because those envelopes have nice pretty liners. I see these as backgrounds for designer series paper. All right, so let's see what we have. We have these beautiful card bases already with raindrops on them and nice tags. Okay, so that's nice. Okay, we have these ones with the hot air balloons. I like the vibrant colors. I like the quality of the cardstock. Okay, we have these ones with the palm trees. I can tell this would look nice on a box as well. The airplanes. Okay, and this little cityscape. All right, so great. So we have, those are the 15 cards. So the kits for 15 cards. Let's look at the envelopes. Okay, you get, you get envelopes which coordinate, beautiful, and they're lined. These ones have the little airplane on them. I usually put things in larger envelopes when I'm sending cards, completed cards out to my crafty friends so, and customers. So I'm gonna probably be cutting a lot of these envelopes apart because I see a lot of potential in the designs on, in the colors of these envelopes. They look like pool party to me, the color pool party. Hot air balloon envelopes. So as you can see, I mean, if you like the kit, you just get it as is. I mean, it's beautiful to make. You don't have to do alternate projects with it, but why not? Why not use some, like what I said, some of the crafts I just keep repeating. Why not use the same kind of crafts over and over? And then you can use your skills that you learn in the series to create projects from any kit that you open up in the now or in the future, because you'll have the skills in your toolbox to take any card, turn it into a box, any piece of cardstock, turn it into a tag tree. Gorgeous embellishments all popping out. I like this airplane, for example. Wow. So you get three sheets of those. See how they're laser cut. That's just wonderful. All right, now you get some of these. These are stickers. These aren't even laser cut. Oh, I can see myself in the reflection. These are just actual stickers. So that's gonna be fun. And I, I can use the actual extra pieces here too. So I can use the extra pieces to, to make things out of. And these borders are beautiful. And you get three sheets of the stickers. Oh, wow. And then you get these which are the, the parts that you're gonna stamp in Bermuda Bay. And Matt, I'll try some other colors as well. Bermuda Bay. All right, great. And these pop out. So I'm happy with all the materials that came in the kit. So I hope you enjoyed the unboxing and the introduction of this section. And so now what I'm gonna do, and this is just kind of learned the lesson because my husband suggested it for the other two kits, is I'm gonna go off and create uh, projects with this kit. I'm gonna see how long it takes me so that I can come back and explain to you how long it takes me to create the projects. I'm going to show you all the alternate projects, including I'll show you one of the ways to make a card as suggested, and then I'll show you the alternate projects I come up with, and then I'll teach you how to make something in 3D as well. All right, so keep on watching, and we'll continue this video very shortly. Thanks. Hello, crafty friends. I'm back after completing the Looking Up card kit. It has taken me four and a half hours to complete 24 projects, and by the end of this, I will have 26 projects to show all together because I'm going to show you how to make two more projects. So I was keeping track and it did take me a few days because I do watch TV and I do things in stages. So I would work for an hour and then an hour and a half and then another hour. So, it, you know, four and a half hours. But I want to just say that this is the easiest kit of all the kits I've, I've created with Stampin' Up! ever, past, present. This is the easiest kit because it has, the cards are just so easy to make just as they are. You just stamp on stamp make the sentiments and glue everything together use some dimensionals and instant cards so i will so in this section this is what i hope to accomplish three things i hope to accomplish showing you how to create the projects that came with the kit as is just showing you how to make one of those cards how to stretch your imagination and make alternate projects including a 3d project and then finally i just want to accomplish that i share a lot of coordinating products that we have from stampin up that you can use with this kit.
both retired and current products. So that way, if you have some of these products, you can think of ways to integrate them and this kit together. Okay, so those are the three things I want to accomplish. Now, let's just start with this. We're gonna take, this is my last card base, okay? I can't believe how great this is, just as is. If you were to try to make a watercolor background, it would take a while. So I just like this background as is. So it calls for just using the these copper stickers and then one of the sentiments. So first of all, when I when I get all my card bases, I, I take them all and I just, and I like how Bermuda Bay is on the back. I just take my card bases and take them all and I get a spatula. You can use a bone folder and I just simply score all my cards. So, I mean not score, uh, crease, I should say. Like take all my cards and I, I make sure that they're all nice and flat. So, and if I'm gonna cut them and make alternate cards like I did for a lot of these projects, I will leave them flat. I will leave them open, I mean, like this, so I can cut them. But it, all the cards that I made for the kit, I just I just take it and I use a little spatula. Now this is just, I'm the paper chef. I get mixed up a lot with Pamper Chef, the, the cooking company. This is my little spatula from, it's called a stone scraper from the, the Pamper Chef. So anyway, I'm using a, the Paper Chef right now is using a Pampered Chef little stone scraper, but you can use a bone folder. So then, and, th and let me just show you in the picture. So I have to show you, we're, what we're doing now is we're just following instructions. And, um, oh, we don't even need one of these. We don't need like the big sticker. We just need the little sticker. So we need the little one that looks sort of like, like train tracks, okay? So it tells you to use this little, this little copper sticker looking like train tracks and you put it down here. Now I found that after making so many cards that I was wasting, I was wasting some of these by putting them under where it's gonna be hidden by the sentiment. So then I started cutting them and getting more use of them. Also save the insides because these make great little embellishments, all these little, the insides of all these little stickers. So I'm just gonna put that little sticker along the line, okay? So you already have kind of a nice element and it shines, so we have copper stickers and save all your, you get three sheets of these, so save all these because you can punch these out and use them. Now, and then it says, okay, stamp, I hear congratulations are in order with Bermuda Bay. So just so you know, for this project, I used I used these three stamps I had. I didn't use my little stamping spot because I'm gonna be giving it as a gift to a new team member, but I just used to use my big stamp pads. But your this kit does come with that stamping spot like we just went over. So I used, I used Bermuda Bay, Granny Apple Green, and Lovely Lipstick to stamp the sentiments in this, all these things I'll be showing you. So now when you hear me refer to Lovely Lipstick, it's like a really nice sort of hot pink reddish color. And then you'll see me using this Granny Apple Green, it's kind of bright, and the Bermuda Bay. So now you know when you hear me say what I used, I used the larger ink pads. So if in case you missed that, I should have done it a little slower. To open up one of our new stamp pads, you just sort of lift up where it has the little bridge, like that, and when you lift it up, it flips, and then you you have to close it to get it to give yourself a little surface. Now move your other stuff away because otherwise I have I'm a really really messy crafter, so you want to move your other stuff away because otherwise you'll end up with like ink all over the project. So what we want to do now is we want to take we want to do I hear congratulations are in order. So you take your stamping block and you take your stamps that came in the kit. Now they did get stained, because that's why I mentioned what I used. So when you use Lovely Lipstick first, or actually use it at all, it doesn't matter if you use it first, second, third, or you can even try Versamark first, it doesn't matter, it's gonna get stained. Lovely Lipstick stains the stamps. But um, that's why some of them are red. But it doesn't ruin the stamps, they work fine and they stamp just fine. But the other colors washed right off, like Bermuda Bay and Granny Apple Green. So I'm using, I hear congratulations are in order. And this is stamping block D, I think. So anyway, you just put this on at an angle like that because it'll fit good at an angle. And then you put, and then you're gonna go tap, tap, tap. Now when you first stamp, always stamp onto some paper to make sure you have a good clean stamp, see? So I'm tap, 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 stamp, even a couple times. Good, that way when you use your sentiment, you're not ruining them. Okay, so let's take, I only have one left. Let's see if that'll even fit on there. I think so, it'll fit, yeah, I have one left. Now it's not the same shape of it that um, is used in that card, but it doesn't matter. It's just to give you an idea how to make the whole, whole card. And now we're gonna, I hear congratulations are in order. This goes really well with that airplane. So I hold it down for a few seconds and I'm sort of wobbling it just to make sure I get a good clean stamp and I did. Now I'm shutting this. 
Now, now you know how to stamp, so we're going to be using these thankful ones for some tag treats when I make a tag treat. Put my Bermuda Bay away, and then, of course, clean your stamp. That should come right off. So now we have, I hear congratulations are in order. I'll just take these ones out, too, while I'm at it, so I have a little more room. And then that's it. So that, that card is done as soon as you put your sentiment on it. It says, put your sentiment on it, and then you're done. And then it talks about, if you want to use... If you want to use the extra pieces for layers, you can. Well, of course I wanted to use the extra pieces for layers. So it came with lots of dimensionals. It came with a couple sheets of dimensionals, this kit. So you just turn it over. And I also, as I was making this, thought these planes would look great on wobble springs. I didn't put them on wobble springs, but that, that's like a little way to make your plane wobble, like it's moving. So it didn't come, it only came with the large dimensionals, right? But when I have, when I have something like this, I like to use some small dimensionals too. Just because I, I mostly mail things, that's kind of how I roll. And so, anyway, I like to make sure things don't kind of pop out of the envelopes too much. All right, so there you go. So you take your little dimensionals off and then you place it over the plane. So that's just sort of decoupaging your planes and make it like another layer so that it's 3D. Now that just really adds to it. And I did that first before I put my sentiment on there just to make sure my sentiment didn't get in the way. And you're going to pop your sentiment up with dimensionals and you can put something behind it as you know as well little extra pieces of paper if you want to layer extra scraps you have but i just think it looks great the way it is so let's put two dimensionals behind something that long don't put one dimensional because it'll get all wonky put put two so that you know it it's stable put them on the edges and then stick that on there that's what i meant by saving your little ladder I, i'm calling this like the ladder element because really you want to don't don't need to use it on the right side. I mean, have that sticking out a little bit. Okay, so there you go. Instant card. See what I mean? Now these these envelopes too are just fantastic because they go with they go with this kit. There's this envelope we're going to use later, but here here's the envelope I saved for this. I mean, look at that. The envelope. Each envelope is different. It has different lining. And it has the little airplane to go with the kit. So I think this is great the way it is. I think this will be great for graduation cards. I, I have a couple. I'm too bad the seniors aren't getting to walk this year. But um, I'm just because of what's going on. But I still have a cousin, you know, graduating. I have different people that I know graduating, friends, children. Okay, so there you go. That's it. That's how you do it. All right, so now we're going to show you. So what I want to start out with is how to how I created the cards from this kit. So I want to show you one card of each that I'm going to say I tried to follow instructions as much as, you know, as, much as I could. I, follow, I followed the instructions on the kit and I created cards. So la 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 la, let's take out the box. I love this little box because everything fit right in here. And we're going to start with these cards. Then I'll do some 3D items, then I'll show you the rest of the cards and I'll show you some how to make a 3D item. Okay, so here we go. These, this is I hear congratulations are in order. I stamped in granny apple green and lovely lipstick for those little elements. I didn't use anything but the little, for this card, you know, just the little element that was in the stamp set. Okay, and the little airplane, done. And you got the matching envelope. Okay, and I'm just wanna show you the envelopes just once again, I mean, just just so you could see how they're all these different cool patterns. Okay, then I did this this city card, cityscape, and it's, I like it because it has the little trees that are in 3D. You add a couple little trees there to your city scene. I stamped it in Bermuda Bay, and I just used that little copper element behind it. Again, so simple. So making the cards as they are is the simplest way to do this whole kit. Okay, this one just as it is. Happy birthday, Bermuda Bay ink. I only used two of the balloons here because I, ha I wanted to use the balloons for other projects, and if I, if I raised them all up, it would make my envelope really puffy. Right, so I just kind of just didn't do all the, I didn't make them all 3D every time. Happy birthday, Bermuda Bay, lovely lipstick, those little elements, and the little circles, the little circle line of copper foiling. And there's the cute little matching envelope. So I'm having so much fun with this kit. <laughs> then this one is, it came with two trees, okay, two trees that you could put 3D. But I thought they would be too crowded with two 3D trees, so I only made one of the trees 3D in the card. And there's that little nice element with copper. And then for, I did, so thankful for you in Bermuda Bay. Look, something got on there. And um, 
but that's when you can just add little elements to cover it up. And then I did, I'm so very thankful for you in Bermuda Bay, and then I did another couple shapes. Now here's what I wanted to explain, what I did for a lot of these projects. This, these shapes here, this, this shape here that came with the kit is exactly the same as this Taylor Tag Punch. So if not anything else, if you're gonna get this kit, I really suggest to get the Taylor Tag Punch along with the kit. Uh, there'll be links in, in the description of these, these coordinating products. Because look, this little, then you can make all these layers that match. So you, you have your sentiment, and then I made little layers that match in just coordinating cardstock. Daffodil Delight and Bermuda Bay. And I haven't figured out how much cardstock I used yet, but I'd like to, in my tutorial, show how much cardstock I used. There's another piece, there's another envelope. I'm not gonna just keep showing envelopes, I'm only showing the envelopes once because I've pretty much cut apart all my envelopes. So that was it, they were the five cards that came with the kit. Now I only used one more card base. These card bases are longer than regular card bases and I changed one card base by doing this. So here's what I did for this card base. This is card number six. So I only made six cards just like the kit or from the base of the kit and then and then that probably the one I just did. Yeah, six total. This card here, no matter the weather, we're in this together, is I'm, I was inspired by this last month's paper pumpkin kit. Or was it this month? It's March. I was inspired by this paper pumpkin kit, and I saw the rain, and I said, oh, no matter the weather, March 2020, and I thought, that stamp, now this is stamped in shaded spruce because I had already stamped. I, I, I stamp all my sentiments ahead of time, but shaded spruce looked okay with the granny apple green in the back. That shade of uh, sh shaded spruce. That shade of shade is pretty. And this is petal pink, the balloon. So I added the balloon to the rainy scene and I just made my own card out of this. Okay, and I think this is a good card for the times we're in. So that's using a paper pumpkin kit inspired by that. And that's the last envelope. So those are the six cards. Now I'm gonna show you some 3D projects and we're gonna get back to these cards. So I have a box here. I'm gonna put everything in the box after I show you so that, you know, we can, we'll do these cards later. Let me show you some 3D. So we have, I talked about my signature crafts, meaning doesn't matter what kit I do, doesn't matter what designer series paper I get in the mail, I pretty much always know what to do. And that's the reason, the reason I always know what to do with it is because I always just make my, the same kinds of crafts over and over with different supplies. So in this, this case, it's not any different. So I showed how to make these in the last tutorial on part two of this series, because we're on part three of the series now. And so these are called my Ghirardelli treat holders, Ghirardelli chocolate square treat holders, or you can also call it a tea holder. So for somebody who doesn't like candy, just put a little tea bag in there. These are great to give out to people who are still working to keep our, our economy going, our, our, our hospitals going. They're still working to keep things running for us, our services. Be thankful for people, or if you're doing a birthday care package. Okay, so for the ribbons, or for the twine and things, so the happy birthday one, I stamped in petal pink. Uh, I used the tailored tag punch, punched it out in petal pink, I stamped. Uh, granny apple green onto petal pink. This is just using whisper white cardstock, granny apple green. Little piece of daffodil delight behind it. These two pieces are lovely lipstick cardstock, the two pieces I used. And this is some little twine called linen thread. And then I started using ribbons. I just grabbed out ribbons. I had three ribbons that coordinated with this project. Um, this one is called Bermuda Bay. And this is on, available in our catalog now. I mean, it's on my website, Bermuda Bay. This one is available now too, Pool Party. I don't know if I any used up the Shimmer Ribbon. I know I used it in the last time. And then this one is not available anymore, but I used it a lot because it's the only ribbon I had that has a granny apple green color in it. It's reversible ribbon, but maybe some of you have it. It's Coastal Cabana Granny Apple Green Reversible Ribbon. I mean, I wish I'd have bought more of that before it retired. And just speaking of retiring, June 2nd, this kit is probably gonna retire because this kit, looking up card kit, has some has an in color in it and it just kind of came to me today as I was using the lovely lipstick is whenever you see something with using an in color when the in color retires the color that it's being used in the kit then then the the kit's probably going to retire now I'm not sure that this color is going to retire I'm not Notre Dame I don't know I can't predict what's in the next catalog but I mean if you like something get it while you see it all right so that's how to do a 3d project like that I talked about it last time how to do it now I'm going to show you these little boxes. Now these little boxes, this one has stuff in it. Is um, I just take the actual card and I just cut it apart. So let's find the card. Let me find the card so you can see kind of what I'm talking about. This card has this line in it that's really beautiful. Anyway, this card base. I just used that as the basis of my score line for this box. So let me open the box so you can see what's in it. 
and just see what I mean. I, I used a score line. This is not, I didn't use any machines. I just used the scoring tool, which I'm going to show you how to use in a minute. A little sticker. And that's it. And a cutting and it's paper trimmer. And your paper trimmer also has a scoring tool in it. So you don't even need simply scored. You can use your paper trimmer to do your scoring. Okay, now I thought, I'm so very thankful for you. That's another stamp with Bermuda Bay, Daffodil Delight. I thought when I saw this, pap this, this palm tree that this would really go good with our Tropical Oasis Designer Series paper, something that's in our mini catalog right now. Look at how cute that is. So these little Tropical D Oasis paper, if you don't want to cut apart your envelopes because the envelopes are super pretty, I just only saved six envelopes out of the 15 because I cut them all apart because I put things in bigger envelopes when I mail things. But if you don't want to cut apart your envelopes to wrap your little nuggets in, these are Hershey nuggets, then then don't cut apart your envelopes. Use use Tropical Oasis Designer Series paper. And then I put some mini Tic Tacs, and of course it's Easter time, so I found these Ghirardelli, Ghirardelli Easter Bunny Caramel. I love caramel, by the way. I love candy, so you'll see me. Lots of little candy. Tic Tacs. All right, so anyway, that's what's in that little box. I'm so thankful for you. And this little box, I didn't finish the bottom yet, so because I kind of ran out of stuff. But... That's when I said I was going to stop when I run out of stuff. So that's that's how I did these boxes, just using the cards. All right, so now I'm going to show you two, th two things, related things, and then we're going to stop and make tag treats, and then we're going to get back to the other projects. So what I want to do is this. I want to show you uh, some bookmarks and then some tag treats. Okay, and then I'm going to show you, then we're going to get, then we're going to make these. We're going to stop and we're going to make, we're going to make these, this one here. Okay, so when you, when you have a lot of like extra embellishments in these kits, then it's really good to make little treats and little bookmarks out of them or tags. So here are a few tags I created. Thankful for you. Here, we'll put that in the middle with the palm trees. <laughs> like that. Feel better soon. So you have a little care package you're giving someone. They're not feeling good. Some tea, some honey, little first aid kit, band-aid, whatever. Make people care packages. Feel better soon. It doesn't mean that they're even sick sick. Maybe they're, they're feeling down. Maybe they're just feeling down because of all that's happening. Give them a little tag. Feel better soon. Okay? So that's just nice. Put that on a little gift bag full like a care package. And I put the little palm tree on it. A little piece of uh, foil. That's granny apple green. Then this one is a piece of the extra card I had left over. And this is just a Bermuda Bay and a little piece punched out with the Taylor tag punch. I, I was I used this probably a hundred times in this project, making extra little shapes to put behind and layer these sentiments. Gotta fix that one. Okay, and then um, that's just the card, and then this one. Happy birthday with a little palm tree. Palm trees are like I had to glue them down at the bottom because I couldn't find dimensionals small enough to fit behind them, and the top is like raised up with dimensionals. And this is uh, all these bookmarks or tags, whichever you want to call them. These are all Daffodil Delight, the reversible ribbon. That's retired, unfortunately. Granny Apple Green. And these little copper elements and some uh, Bermuda Bay. This is just from the envelopes. Not envelopes, the back of the cards. So on the back of the cards, here, the card, the card stock, I used that back to make these. The background for these texts. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what you can do and how to make these little treats. Now, you have, you have these, if you see, this is using this punch here. It's called this, oh no, that's the scallop tag topper. You could use the scallop tag topper, by the way. But I use for my projects what's called the delightful tag topper punch. Okay, the delightful tag topper. It's just a newer punch because I've used my scallop one probably thousands of times and it's still going strong. I think this one's even stronger because it just has a bigger hole and it just seems to like not get stuck as much. But these are both awesome punches. So you can use either punch for what I'm about to show you. And now I'm going to show you how to use that. So I use it for tags like this and use it for tag treats like this. So this one was really tiny, this tag treat. And because it was really tiny, because that's all I had left of this tiny piece of card, that's all I had left. I used Bermuda Bay, the little raindrops. So very thankful for you. Petal Pink at Daffodil Delight, that Bermuda Bay striped ribbon. And I put a Hershey miniature inside there, wrapped in the envelope liner. Okay, so that's what I put in there, Hershey miniature. For this one I put in... I used lovely lipstick behind it, granny apple green, and I used little Hershey nuggets wrapped in the envelope liners. This is an envelope liner around the side of the tag treat, and this is so simple to make. All right, so here's what you do. 
because I promised in every one of my tutorials on creating card kits, I'm going to show you something 3D. So I promise, so that's what we're doing. We're always going to do something 3D so that you can get, get, you know, get this kit. You don't want to make cards? Fine. Don't make cards. Make 3D items. Get the kit. Make 15 boxes if you want. Make 100 of these tag treats if you want. You don't need to use the kits for cards. So what you do is you take a piece of cardstock, okay? And I will have the description. I'll have this in the description. You want to take, this is my paper trimmer. This is the Stampin' Up! paper trimmer, okay? And I'm going to open up the arm. I'm going to make sure I'm in focus here. And I think I already have it measured, but we'll see. Six point, yeah, I already do. I already have 6.75. Can you see that? So 6.75, I already cut that part. So cut a piece 6.75 inches, that's right there. And then you want to go by two inches. Okay, all these punches, I didn't use my, I didn't use my scan and cut for any of these projects until the very end. I'll show you something you can use it for, but I didn't use it for anything. I just used punches, my trimmer, my simply scored. You're going to take it and you're going to get, you're going to go two inches. See that? Two inches. Let me, I'll show you closer. Okay, so there, we have a two inches. You want to go two inches by 6.75. Again, Use my description. I've done this on YouTube before. I'll link to related videos and things. So that's what you have. Now, you never just do one. You know, do a whole bunch of these. In fact, I'm just going to make another one in case I mess up. Because really, you never just make one tag treat. You never just make one card. Do everything in stages. And, and do it while you're watching TV and other things. I mean, Netflix, whatever. Because... You want to make the most use of your time. Now, if you have this scoring tool on your cutting board, that's great. Okay. I happened to take mine off because it was getting on my nerves because I did a paper share and I had a lot of paper to cut. And I took the scoring tool off of my cutting board. I much prefer to use what's called the Simply Scored scoring tool. Okay. So this is what I prefer to use. It's a scoring board. It's called Simply Scored. Comes with a little scoring tool like this with a fat end that I use for flowers, making bending flowers, and a small end that I use for scoring. So I'll do this twice so you get the, so you get an idea how to do it. So I'm going to I'm going to score at I, this is 6.75 inches, right? Here we go. 6.75 by 2 inches. Okay? Recalling, that's what we just cut. 6.75 by 2. You're going to score at 3 and 3.75. Okay? Always 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 score before you punch. Always score before you punch. Okay? And then you fold it. And then you can punch. We'll do it again with a better angle. Just one more time for good measure. Okay, I'll even bring this up. I'll do it where you can really see it. So here I am. I have a 6.75 by 2 inch piece. I'm going to score at 3. It doesn't really matter which side you use for scoring, but I like to use the small side. Small side. 3 and 3.75. Okay, I'm going to show you why you punch after you score. Now you have it and you fold it a little bit along the score lines and then you're going to punch. Why? Let me get rid of this. I need to make room on my table. And let's put these back. The reason why you're going to punch, let's get rid of the scallop tag topper so you're not confused, but you can use the scallop tag topper. It's just that I like this one better because the hole is smaller and my ribbon doesn't fall out as easily, depending on the ribbon. So now if you were to punch this, okay, we're going to punch it. Just put the two inches is perfect size. That's why we did it. And we're going to punch. Now, make sure that's good. Yeah, it is good. Now look. If you did punch later, I mean, if you if you punched and then you tried to score, it wouldn't be the right size. See, when you punch, the, the paper gets smaller. So always punch after you score, or you won't. Or you have a wonky tag treat. So, like I said, tag treats are something I make for every single. Every time I get designer series paper, every time I get a new project kit, I make tag treats. They're they're just one of my signature crafts. But I mean, you they're just so easy. Just use the idea. Other people have made them in every kind of variation that there are. There is. I just came up with measurements because, you know, I like how it looks to hold my nuggets. But other people have made them all kinds of ways to hold all kinds of little treats. Okay, so now we have this. Now we need a piece of paper that's 6 by 0.75. Now the problem is, here's the problem. We need six, we need a piece of paper that's 6 inches long. Well, when I cut the envelopes, they... They were not six inches long. So you just cut your envelope apart, but I'm just going to show you that I'm just going to overlap here and uh, sort of, or we can do it again. I'll do it again to 
because these are kind of wonky. So when you have your envelope liner, which we're going to wrap around the bottom, the envelope liner is not quite six inches long. Uh, let's use, we can use this envelope, it doesn't really matter. I'll cut apart a new envelope. So what I want is, I'm going to do 0.75. Here, let's first let's lop off the end of the envelope. Okay. okay, lop off the end of the envelope because you can't you can't use this part of it, right? You can't use that part of it. So you want to do, we're going to do 0.75 inches. So no matter which way I did it, it was 0.75. So three quarters of an inch. The envelope wasn't six inches long ways or, or sideways, so I had to end up, I just had to end up gluing the pieces together is what I had to do. And then I can do my scoring. Oops, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, we'll do this again, we'll do this one. I had the end of the envelope there. So, 0.75. And don't worry, it'll all be in the description. Where are all these? Huh. I don't know what happened to the piece. I just, oh, here it is, here it is. Okay. The absent minded professor. So we're going to glue these together. And so for that, I just use a piece of what's called tear and tape. Okay, a little piece of tear and tape. I'm just going to make this, it's not six inches, but I'm going to make it six inches. But first, I need to extend the paper. So basically, you have this one's 6.75 inches by 2 inches. Now, this one is 0.75 inches, this little piece that goes around the bottom of your tag tree, by, there we go, sorry, by 0.75, by 6 inches. Okay, so I will have that in the description. So now we have a big, long piece, and now we can cut it the size we need. Now, normally, like I said, with cardstock, you won't need to cut it the size you need because it's not like you're going to be working with little envelope scraps like I am here. So let's lop off one side. Okay. So I glue them together. I get I get it long. And then I can make my six inch piece. How? Because there's little, on Stampin' Up's little paper trimmer, this little lip at the end. I love this little lip because I use it for all my, when I'm doing designer series paper shares, when I share paper. I like it because it, it, that's six inches. It butts up against there and that's exactly the six inch mark. Yay! Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go six inches. Okay, and I thought I was done with my score tool, but I'm not, so we're going to go. So now we have a six inch by 0.75 inch piece. We need to wrap that around there. I'm not doing two of them, I'm just doing one. And we are going to score. Okay. I'm going to score this little piece. We're going to do it this way. All right, so two inches, two inches, 2.75. The, the reason I turned it the other way is I like the little, see, I did two inches and 2.75. I like that little seam to be on the outside. I just put it on the outside, like little side, but it doesn't really matter. So two, 2.75, 4.75, and five and a half, and that'll all be in the description. And what these little markers are for is when you're doing like loads of these, which I do all the time. So if I was making loads of these, I would put, you know, little markers there, remember? I would just not, so I would go, oh, two, 2.75. I'd put a marker there. That's, this, our Simply Scores comes with these markers, so 4.75, and then I'd have to remember the last one because I think only three, I think only three markers come with it. But anyway, so then you, then you do, so then you fold along the score lines and that's it, and you glue this together. You glue this little band together. So make your little band. And I know I'm going really slow, and some of you already know how to do this, but I really I really don't want any mystery. Like, how did you make this kit? How do you do so many alternate projects? How are you doing it so fast? This should, sort of, this should sort of like get the mystery out of how I do things so fast. I just do the same things over and over and over again, like all the time. <laughs> The same kind of crafts over and over. That's how I get so much done. That's how I, I mean, I just made all these cards. All right, so then you put the little piece of glue there and then you have your little band. Okay, so now you take your, I need to put some color in here. I need color in my camera. So if I don't have color, I get, it just keeps going light to dark. So then you go like this and you're gonna, 
you're going to put some tape there. You're going to put some tape on your little tag treats. Again, do them all at once. That's why I love tear and tape. Tear and tape is like portable. Not that we can go out anywhere, but it's portable, meaning you can take it to your living room, right? And you can do all your little, do all your little tear and tape. And, or if you're making boxes, especially when you're making boxes, you can put all your tape on there ahead of time and then like go out in the other room, peel them off later when you're ready to put the bands on. I like tear and tape because of how portable and flexible it is. Okay, and you, so I'm just taking, and you can use any rolling adhesive like snail or your tape gun, so you, or even liquid glue. Just don't use liquid glue on the actual nuggets. Now you take your little band and you put it down. So squeeze the middle, squeeze the middle and push it down until it touches the, touches your table. Perfect, and then put your fingers in there and you've made your little tag treat. Okay, and then that's it. Put your fingers in there and you squeeze and you, so now this is attached. And then there's a front and a back, sort of like, well, the front and the back, I call that, the back would be where, where the seam is. I don't even know where the seam, okay, but that's good. That'll be the front. Whatever side looks cuter is the front. So now you take your little sentiment. I'm so thankful for you. Well, any sentiment you want. Okay, we'll put that there. And we'll put it on the front of the tag treat. That's probably a big one, huh? I thought I had a small one. It doesn't matter. Get your little dimensionals out. Stick some dimensionals on there. Okay, stick that on there. And then wherever you want to put it. Maybe let's do some little copper foiling. Because remember I told you we have a lot of extra. I said there's a lot of extra ones of these. So let's use some little foils just so you can see. Just to jazz it up a bit. And save these little bits in the middle of the foils too. Looks nice. So let's see where we're going to put this. I think I'm going to put it up there. Just across like at the top. So just add extra little elements. Oops. My little, my little things are sticking. Okay. And we'll stick that there. Oh, could I get any more crooked? But you know I'm not a big stickler for being perfectionist. I like things to just look cute, but we'll make it. We'll fix it because we can. And, I mean, what else are we doing, right? Fix our crafts so they're not so wonky. We shouldn't be in so much of a hurry anymore. This is the time to stop and craft and write, write notes to people. All right, so there you go. That's it. I'm so thankful for you. And then you take your little... Let's use Bermuda Bay, only because it matches. And when I do my matching up, like I take my, when I'm measuring, I mean, not my matching up, I just take a stamp set. And that brings me to my next point anyway about coordinating products, but I take a stamp set and I just kind of go like at a diagonal and I make the ribbon like the size of the stamp set at an angle. And that's how I know how much ribbon to start with. And then I trim it down some more. But if you want to know how many inches that was, because some of you guys really like to know, here, that was about eight inches. But I trim it down smaller. But that's kind of what I start with, seven, eight inches. And then I kind of trim it down smaller when I get it to even it out. So then I put it through like this. I put it through. And then I loop it like a piece of luggage. Like, so you just sort of wrap the ribbon like that loop it through and voila you have a tag treat beautiful and then I trim it once more to make it a little shorter so that it's even too and so it doesn't droop as much and I it's easier to cut when they're both together so I've probably lost another inch by the time I do that but that's better than getting it all frayed when I put it through and then I take my nuggets and you wrap your nuggets in three three and a quarter inch pieces by one inch pieces from wrap the nuggets from your envelopes Put that in there and people love these. You, you've taken the time to give them something personal. And that's how. Okay, so I wanna show you a few more 3D projects. And then I'm gonna talk about some coordinating stamp sets. And then I'm gonna wrap things up with the extra, my alternate cards because I know a lot of you like to see alternate card projects. All right, so that's how to make a tag treat. And we made one like this earlier with the little tree because I, the tree um, I don't have any more trees. I can't show you that, but you can, you know, you get the idea. Just embellish it the way you want. So that's the tag treats. They stand up straight, put nuggets inside. Now I'm going to show you another nuggets 
that I created. So I took every one of the envelopes and I wrapped them in different colors. These are the envelope liners. And so I have a lot of little scraps, but I don't know how many more nuggets I can wrap, but I maybe can just do one more of these, although I'm out of hot air balloons. I used some little copper foil at the top and I used a piece of the card and I stamped happy birthday in both Bermuda Bay and lovely lipstick. The lovely lipstick accents the little balloon. That's why I didn't put all three balloons on every card. What I like to do when I make nuggets is put this on the outside of the package, especially when I go to craft fairs and things, or when I send these to gifts. I'm not sure if someone has a nut allergy. Okay, so I put that on the back. And I don't really put them on the back of these. I don't want to mark these, but I might put like on the back of these, I'd put it on the bag. I'd put contains nuts like on the bag itself. Maybe, just depends on who I'm sending it to. Now my family isn't allergic to nuts except for one person, but if I know I'm sending it to like a different person, like I'm not sure. All right, so I have one more 3D project. I'm gonna show you then some coordinating products, products, and then I'm gonna go back and show you the rest of my cards. All right, so this is, this is my mini pizza box. Okay, and this is, what I did with this one is, just again, that linen thread. Okay, little pieces of copper foiling, those little stickers. Put it, wrap the box, put all the different, I just used all the different, like this is a piece of the envelope. These, these little copper foilings are the stickers. This is a piece of a card. This is a piece of the sticker. I mean, you just use whatever you have. You take all your scraps and just have fun with it, decorating things. And then I did it, uh, thankful for you in the inside with some more copper foiling and more of the liners from the, from the envelopes. And then I did some nuggets wrapped in the liners from the envelopes. And little, little caramel, oh God, these are a piece of heaven. Hey, if there's one thing you're gonna get at the store, get these while you're out. If you go to the store, grocery store, because they only these are only here once a year, these little caramel, Cadbury caramel eggs. And there's a caramel, and then under the grass is just more envelope liners, okay? So that's what I did and for the inside of the pizza box. All right, coordinating products, then cards. So I have this pile of cards to show you still. So as I saw this pile of cards, I thought, I already told you about the designer series paper, Tropical Oasis. I thought that coordinates really well. But then I thought of these like sayings and I was like, some of these sayings, like for example, like this congratulations, I thought, wow, wouldn't that go really good with like this really so very proud of you for this royal peacock or you are incredible or you did it. Congratulations on your amazing, on such an amazing accomplishment. Here's to an exciting future full of new adventures. So what I'm thinking is for the graduation card, because I haven't done the insides of my card yet, the graduation card, I could put these sentiments in there from the Royal Peacock set. So this is currently in our catalog on my store, Royal Peacock. Okay, I think that goes well with it. Unfortunately, this one I think goes well with it too, but it's retired. It's not unfortunate that it goes well, but it's unfortunate that it retired. Lift me up. I mean, look at all these. Hope your day is on cloud nine. Look at all these things, which would go great with this this kit. So I'm glad I saved this. One of the reasons I like being a stamp hoarder sometimes because I have so many options of things to use. Okay, then um, this this one we still have. This one isn't part of the 2020 mini catalog, Under My Umbrella. I thought this really goes good with these rain backgrounds, right? Under My Umbrella. So this is a good one. We have an umbrella builder punch that goes good with this. We have what's called a hot air balloon punch. And I'm like this little sending from Ride With Me. I cut this out, scan and cut. I like this. It says Ride With Me or I'm always here to pick you up. This goes good with the hot air balloons. Um, the Ride With Me stamp set. There, we also have a stamp set called Above the Clouds and a hot air balloon punch that goes with that. So those two products will go well with it. And finally, I think this will go well with it. This little Fable Friends. This is one I cut out with the scan and cut. So I'm ready with this Fable Friends. I made one duck that's with the coordinating colors. This is Fable Friends, the duck. And I thought Rain or Shine, you're always in my mind. That's from this one. That's from this one here, under my umbrella, but the duck itself is from Fable Friends. So just see how you can use all kinds of, I'll keep him out because we might put him on a card. All kinds of things you can use together. So when you have, when you use coordinating colors, it doesn't matter which stamp set, they all coordinate. All right, so let's wrap it up here. I took all these cards and I decided, I, I like how cards feel when they're on Stampin' Up! cardstock. That's just my preference versus the card kits, which are a little bit lighter cardstock. So I like to cut apart my card kit, stick them onto my own card backgrounds. And I like, so this is Granny Apple Green, and I like to just make my own cards. That's very simple. I use the same card 
concept, but just my own cards. Oh, that one was one of theirs. That was one of their card bases. But here's one I did a, a basic black card base. And I'm so very thankful for you. This was one of the get well themes, but I put thankful on it instead. And there's those raised little uh, raindrops because it called for like raising up some things. Okay, this one has a couple of thank yous with lovely lipstick. Thankful for you. Now here's where I was telling you, save these little pieces in this kit. Save all these little insides because you can use them. I used the little diamond ones here and I used the circle ones there. And I love how they just make your little things pop and shine. I used lots of extra little pieces of copper foiling, piece of envelope liner. This is the back of one of the cards, Bermuda Bay. And it's all on a Daffodil Delight background. So although this card is super simple, it's probably like my favorite. I don't know what about it. It's just the simplicity of it makes it sort of like this, I, I think I want to repeat this and make more of these. Just, I mean, it says thank you in so many ways, right? It's so nice. And then here's an envelope liner. I did an alternate card with, again, Daffodil Delight, just like this last one was Daffodil Delight. Envelope liner, hot air balloon. I combined the hot air balloon with the palm tree. More of this ta tailored tag punch. More of that layering done with the ta ta tailored tag punch. And this, this font reminds me of that show called The Jetsons. I don't know, it's kind of futuristic. Or it's kind of vintage and futuristic. I just like it. I don't know. I don't even know what the Jetsons font looks like, but I just love that font. And so I'm happy with the stamp set all together. Daffodil Delight. Happy birthday to you on a basic black cardstock. Basic black. And a lovely lipstick sentiment with a pool party background punched out. These little circle things again. I just like the way this feels more. Like I like how it feels heavier than a card that came out of the kit. And you can take the cards that come out of the kit and just cut them up and put them on these other card backgrounds if that's what you prefer, like I do. And then here's a couple more, and here, here's ones made with the cityscape with the little trees uh, puffed up on dimensionals. Just use this, whatever sentiment you want. Those are granny apple green sentiments on daffodil delight backgrounds. And finally, this one looks pretty cool with the balloons. I used all three balloons, and I used some copper foiling. I used the copper corners of the copper foiling. You just cut off the corners of the stickers, stick them onto your card, feel better soon. And I, I, I put this down with like the tear and tape flat. And then this one's with dimensionals. The, the middle balloon has dimensionals on it. Again, super simple card. I hope you enjoyed part three of my series on working with card kits. And I hope you will continue to watch the series and see what other things I do with the rest of the, we still have four more card kits to make that are current in our Stampin' Up! catalog. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. That's all for now. This is The Papered Chef.